All right, good morning everybody. Doing a mentor session with Todd Ferguson. If you guys haven't met me, or if I haven't met you, uh, my name is Todd. I run a third-party logistics warehouse, or a 3PL, in Southern Missouri with my wife. We also have an uh, e-commerce business, and uh, do a couple other things in the e-commerce space. So we're gonna answer some of your questions today. Um, as we go through these, if it doesn't make sense or you need more explanation, feel free to reach out to me uh, via uh, direct message, messenger, um, and we can uh, kind of work from there. So first question comes from Lawrence. Lawrence asks, does a business that is operated from home that requires customers to come to the home negatively affect the business's perceived credibility? If so, how can this be mitigated? So the business description says, I'm a primarily a service-based business that operates from a private home approved by the state and local governments to do so. My business requires customers to come to me for service I offer, either by shipping the item for service or dropping off locally. This question does not apply to customers that ship it in, but for in-person customers. So I think part of your entrepreneurial journey, um, most people anyway, um, you know, even for us, we started out in our home. Now we were selling products on Amazon and so there was not a need for customers to come. Um, but as part, that is part of your, a lot of people's entrepreneurial journey is, you know, it's a first a side hustle, then it's, you validate that you can do the business, it can make money, and then you start moving into finding a, a, an actual space, whether that's an office or a warehouse. But that is most of the time part of a journey. And so, you know, it's, I understand why people do it. I know why we did it. A lot of times it's to save money, to help, um, keep your costs down because you can operate out of your home. Um, so you just have to ask yourself, what does a customer see when they arrive at your house or your, your home? You know, is it an apartment? Is it an actual house? How is the, how is the lawn landscaped? You know, is there, is, is the house kept up? Does it look professional? Is it inviting? Does it give the appearance to people that they can trust you with, you know, the products that they're dropping off. And so I, I looked up your business and I, and you know, I know you do laser engraving on firearms and stuff like that. And so what does a customer that is going to drop that off, what do they expect? You know, are you, are you giving them assurance that their product's safe, that it's going to be well taken care of, um, and that, you know, you're going to do a good job and, and the, per, the appearance of your home, if that is what it is, is, you know, is your place of business is going to go a long way. Now there's other options you can you can potentially lease out uh, like WeWork or spaces um, to where people can actually come and drop stuff off and it's more of a professional place of business. But just ask yourself: Is your is your home look well maintained? Does it show that you take pride? And do the customers feel confident that when you drop something off that or when they drop something off that they're it's going to be treated exactly the way it needs to be? It's going to be turn out amazing, um, and so I think that goes a long way. I would encourage you, at some point, to consider you know leaving your home if that makes sense, just for a credibility standpoint. But you know, there's things you can do right now. I think to to make sure that that it works out well. So hopefully that helps. Uh, the second question comes from Sam. Sam says, "What has helped you build self confidence?" Business description says, "I'm introverted and I have self confidence issues and want to change that." Do you have any lessons to share that can help me? So in my opinion, I believe that self-confidence and being introverted are actually two different things. And a lot of times we use the word introverted to make us feel better about, you know, us not knowing how to, to communicate with other individuals, us not having self-confidence. And so being introverted um, and self-confidence are, are just two different things in my opinion. But the thing that I would ask you is, is what are you not self-confident? Like what, what are you not confident about yourself about? Is it the way you communicate? Is it your appearance? Is it, um, you know, whether it's weight or whether it's, you know, the way you dress? Um, why are you not confident when you walk into a room, let's just say of entrepreneurs? What makes you not confident? You know, a lot of that could be that you're not maybe at a certain level that you want to be at business. So then the goal would be to get to that level so that you're confident. And no matter where you are in your entrepreneurial journey, it's funny, I talked to Sean about this the other day, um, is that, you know, there's always going to be that 
little bit of insecurity potentially, or it is for me and self-confidence, but it's, you know, if you know how to communicate, that would be something if you're not, if you don't know, if you're not comfortable communicating with others in a group setting or one-on-one, -on -one, there's tons of stuff in the, in the AO uh, portal that talk about that, whether that's even sales training, um, communication training. A lot of times it's just ask, learning how to ask the right questions and then stop talking and let somebody else tell you about their business. And then, you know, you, you learn more business acumen, you learn how to communicate. And so just ask yourself what has given you or what, what keeps you from having the confidence. The stuff that has worked for me though, is I know that I get uncomfortable in large groups. And so my goal is to interject myself into those situations so I can become better at that. If, if we're expecting for us just to listen to a book or to watch a YouTube video or to go through a course and then all of a sudden like we're, we're better communicators or we're, we have more confidence or whatever it is, we have to put that stuff into practice. And so there are going to be times to where it's uncomfortable for you and it's, going to be weird or awkward for yourself, but most of the time, nobody else recognizes that it's, it's all in our head and it's all mental. And so I would just tell you the things that, you know, you're working on, use that. And I believe Sam, you're coming to summer social, I think. So I, it would be a great time to work on those things that you're not confident in. And I'll be there. If you guys, if you want to talk more about this, we can, but identify the issues that make you not confident in yourself, work on those and then work on communication to be a big thing and put yourself in situations that make you uncomfortable so you can gain confidence and so you can work on those skills. So hopefully that helps Sam. All right, next question comes from Ricardo. Ricardo asks, how do I create a business partnership? So as I would, business description, I want to know how to structure a business partnership. What type of legal advice should I look for when I do this or is it based on a handshake or relationship? Any mentors have experience, I appreciate any feedback. So I have multiple, several I guess would be the right word, business partnerships and I've had multiple in the past. And so my advice and what has worked for me would be to talk to a lawyer, CPA, whoever that is, it's, that's structuring that for you and put stuff in writing. So talk to them, first of all, before we do that, before I, what I would do again is have a conversation with the person you're looking to enter into a partnership with. You need to be very clear who, what person does what roles and, and, and what, what the responsibility are, how you quantify those roles, how you uh, measure those roles, like what KPIs or what things must that individual and or you know different partners do to meet those goals. And so that would be the, the first thing would be to have very clear and concise roles and responsibilities, whether they're a minority partner or whether you're equal partners, it needs to be very spelled out. Um, that will change as you go through your partnership and, and your um, businesses, but to have that at the beginning and make sure that there is, you know, time that you guys meet, whether it's weekly or monthly, and you go through your KPIs and your goals and, and the responsibilities and have those open and off and, and honest conversations. But anytime you're, you're entering into a business relationship, a partnership, you know, basically it's a marriage with a, a, another individual, but with the business as opposed to, you know, a spouse, um, it needs to be as legal as, as, as it can be. Um, now there's times that you can do handshakes and, and, you know, just say, oh, we've been friends forever. But I have found that those are the ones that probably need more structure than just the good old boy um, going on, on somebody's words. And so, you know, it depends on how you're going to set up your, your business, whether, you know, it's a partnership or an LLC or, uh, uh, whether it's a, like an, a, there's, there's tons of stuff. Um, so, and, and I'm not, that's why I partner with other professionals, accountants or CPAs, lawyers, um, and get the advice from them and then figure out how we're going to structure it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's what I would do is to talk to the individual first lay out some groundwork or individuals, lay out some groundwork, identify roles and responsibilities, then seek some legal advice. And then, you know, if, if it still works out, sign the agreement, um, enter into a business partnership. Business partnerships, you know, you ask 10 people or 100 people and you're gonna get 100 different answers. They can be great, they can be horrible. 
And it's all, in my opinion, it's, and from what I've learned, it's all about how you structure it, all about the communication that you have with the other individual or individuals, and how willing you're, you are to have open and honest conversations with them and get the same feedback. So Ricardo, hopefully that helps, man. All right, last question comes from Robin. Robin says, do you think it's a good idea to offer original one-of-a-kind tiny art, so two inches by three inches? So the business description and background question says, I'm working on a collection of tiny colored pencil drawings. They take 10 hours. I charge $50 and a plexiglass frame. I am willing to get paid $5 an hour to get my brand out there. What do you think? So a couple things that pop up in my head um, when, I, when I think of this is, you know, I'm not an artist. I'm not into that space. But the one thing... I would ask, or I would, I would question is, is, are your customers looking for that type of art? Like, are 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 you making art? Are you making that because you enjoy it? Um, because it's easier? Because it takes less time? Or is that actually what your customers are looking for? Is that what people that like that kind of art, like? Colored pencil drawings. Are they looking for tiny art, or what are they looking for? Are they looking for, um, you know, a five by seven or an eight by ten or something larger? Are they looking for that? And so, you know, what is an average like when 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 you do your artwork? Like, what do people do with that? Do they set it on their desk? Do they want to hang it on their wall? That's the kind of stuff that I would be asking. Is what are my customers looking for? And then that's what you go out and make. Is it's the whole point of or the whole exercise of really nailing down your avatar or your ideal customer and what does your ideal customer want maybe they do want that i have no idea but that would be something when you're out talking to people when you're when you're talking about your art asking them is that what you want is, is that you know if you were to if you were to have an ideal size of art in your house like what would that be and then that that's the that's the direction i would go now then you ask the question um you tell me that it tell us that it takes 10 hours and you charge 50 dollars and you're willing to get paid $5 an hour to get your brand out there. And again, Robin, that's one of those things that I would encourage you to look at changing your mindset. You're, you know, we, we do have to do things to get our name out there, but also your art, I've seen it. It is amazing and you need to get paid for, for what you're worth. And so basically you're telling us that you're, you're, you're exchanging 10 hours of time for $5 an hour. And so then the questions would be, is what else could you do to generate more income? Is that really what you're worth? And if, if that is the case and you're, and you're doing tiny art, like what do you charge when you do an eight by 10 or 15 by 20 or whatever the normal sizes are? And so, you know, that, those are the things that just come to mind. Again, I'm not in the art space. Um, I'm not in, in that, but I would just ask your, ask your customers what they want, make that and charge them accordingly. Um, and again, your the mindset that for you, Robin, would be because I've you know we've talked about this is knowing how valuable and how amazing your artwork is, and it's just how you portray that to people, how how confident you are when you're talking to them, um, and then you know just getting it in front of enough people and people are going to love it because I, I know when you brought it to the last event I was at, everybody's like, oh my gosh, these are amazing, and so people were willing to pay you more than you were asking. So it's just that self-worth and knowing, you know, what you do is something that most people can do. All right, well, everybody, that's all the questions that we have. So hopefully um, that made sense. If not, again, feel free to reach out to me. I will be at Summer Social uh, this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So if you're there, hopefully we can connect and um, have a great time. Thanks, everybody, and we will talk to you soon.